The Pixel 9 series is the latest and greatest from Google. Let's unbox it. Then let me show you some recommended settings in my setup guide to get the best out of your Google Pixel 9 or 9 Pro or 9 Pro XL. But first, hi, I'm Captain Awesome. This is Geekception. I would really appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe as that really helps me out here on the channel. Now I have it in the best color here, which is rose quartz or pink for those in the streets. And right away, the phone feels very solid in the hand. And of course, we can't forget the massive camera bump at the back where it houses three cameras and a flash here on the Pro XL. Now I also have the official matching Pixel case here with a Google logo on the front and hashtag team Pixel on the back. Now putting the phone in is as simple as sliding it in and it fits like a glove. All right, let's turn on this baby right here. And on turning it on, the first thing that I notice is that there's a security update available, which I download and install. And after restart, I set up my fingerprint unlock with both of my thumbs, which is the setting that I recommend you do for security. Now, let me take you through some of my recommended apps and settings here on the Google Pixel 9 and it applies to any of the phones in the Pixel 9 series. Now starting with the first app I install here, we go into the Google Play Store and installing Bitwarden as this is my password manager of choice. You most definitely want to have your password secure and not the one that you used when you were in high school. Next, DNS is the second app that I recommend you install because it is very effective at blocking ads, not just in apps, but on a system level as well. Next, I'll be installing Notion as that's my project management tool of choice here. And while Google Photos is great, I do not like like the fact that every time I want to view photos taken with a pixel right here, I have to see all of my cloud photos as well. So let's fix that. Search for gallery app by Google on the Play Store, install it, and you'll be able to see photos that you took only on your pixel with no cloud component whatsoever. Now, the last essential app I'll be installing is Kiwi Browser. Now, this browser enables me to be able to use Chrome extensions on Android, which I really like. Now, the first settings I'll turn on here is the battery percentage, as I want to see how much battery I have left. So what I'm going to do is tap on settings, tap on battery, and then tap on battery percentage toggle and now you'll be able to see how much battery you have left. Now after installing apps onto the pixel right here, I noticed that they all get dumped onto the home screen and I do not like this behavior at all. So let's fix it. All you have to do is press and hold on the home screen here, tap on home screen settings and toggle off the option to add icons to the home screen. Now whenever you install a new app, it will not automatically appear on your home screen. Display settings. Now there are a few settings here I want to change in the display. So first go into settings and then tap on display. Now tap on lock screen and tap on now playing where you can get song identifications on the lock screen. Now this text explains that it doesn't send anything to the cloud, which means that it's secure, which is nice. Tap on the toggle to enable it and it will download the song database to your phone and you can enable show search button on the lock screen so that you can identify songs that aren't uh, downloaded already. And if you want to quickly identify a song, but you don't have time to open Shazam, for example, this is a great option. And I kind of wish that other Android phones had this option as well, to be honest. And that's thing on that lock screen here is wake screen for notifications, which might sound great in theory, but it can be very, very annoying when your phone lights up every single time you get a notification. So let's disable this toggle. Go back to the display settings and scroll down and tap on screen resolution. Now here you can choose between high resolution or full resolution. Now since we paid over a thousand dollars for the Pixel 9 Pro XL right here, why not use it at the full resolution? So Enable full resolution to get the best display quality here. And note that this will use a little bit more battery life, but you know what? It's worth it. You have enough battery to spare. Come on, live life a little. Enjoy. It's the little things in life that matters. Also, turn on smooth display to use up to the 120 hertz refresh rate here available on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So we're smooth, baby. Let's save your battery life. Now there's one setting that might potentially save battery life in the long run, and it's not where you think it is. Go into the main settings page and tap on connected devices. Then tap on connection preferences. and then tap on printing, turn off the default printing service. And if you use, you know, printing services from your phone, then maybe leave it on. But most people don't, I don't. So please turn it off and you'll definitely be saving some battery life on your Pixel device right here with this setting standoff. Adaptive charging. Okay, this is another settings that can actually save your battery health in the long run, actually. In the main settings screen, tap on battery and then tap on adaptive charging and then turn it on. Now what this feature does is actually notice the patterns in which you charge your device and optimize for charging your device device without overcharging it, which again can save your battery health in the long run. Now, as I'm downloading all of these apps, I get a pop-up here to get app suggestions on the bottom row of my home screen. And I think you should enable this because you'll be able to have quick access to your commonly used apps. Tap on get app suggestions and boom, I now have app suggestions at the bottom of my screen, which I think is really cool. Notifications. Let's adjust the notification settings here. Under the main settings screen, tap on notifications, then tap on notification history and toggle it on. This ensures that you have a log of all the 
the notifications you get on your phone. And if you mistakenly clear all your notifications or, you know, want to get a notification you got in the past, you can always go back to it. Now, I want you to go back to notification settings, scroll down and tap on allow notification snoozing. This allows you to dismiss a notification temporarily. So this can be useful. For example, if you get a notification, you swipe it away or you cannot get to it in that moment. Maybe you're in a meeting or something and you want to come back to it later, but you don't want to, you know, lose the notification. It will just come back again in a predetermined time. Personalizing your Pixel phone. Now, one of the most important things you can do when you get a phone is to actually make it yours. Now to do that in the main settings screen, I want you to scroll down and tap on about phone, then tap on device name and give it a name that suits your wonderful device right here. Tap OK and you are done. You've successfully made this your own Pixel. Gestures. Now there are several gestures that I recommend you enable here on your Pixel 9 series phone. So go to settings, scroll down and tap on system. Then tap on gestures. Start with quick tap to start actions and enable quick tap, which allows you to double tap the back of your phone to perform actions like taking a screenshot or accessing your digital assistant. Now, if you don't want to accidentally trigger the action, you can toggle on require stronger taps, which will need you to use a little bit more force. Go back and enable quickly open camera. Now this allows you to double tap the power button quickly to open the camera from any screen, even when your phone is locked. Enable flip camera for a selfie so that when you're in the camera app, you can twist your phone to switch to the front camera, which can come in handy when you're taking photos. Another gesture here is to reclaim your power button. Now by default, pressing and holding on your power button here brings up your digital assistant. And if you prefer to just have it as a power button for restarting or I don't know, turning off your phone like a normal person, this can be incredibly frustrating. So let's change that. Tap on press and hold power button and then select power menu. And now pressing and holding the power button will give you the restart menu instead. Yes, we can bring things back for normal people like us, thankfully. And the last gesture here is flip to which if you enable this, placing your phone face down will turn on do not disturb mode. So this is useful if you're like in meetings or you don't want your phone to, you know, buzz or disturb you and you want to silence your phone. All you have to do is just, if you have enabled this, take your phone, place it face down on the table and boom, it will enter into do not disturb mode, which can be very, very helpful. Enable circle to search. Now one of the most underrated AI features here on the Pixel 9 series of phone is circle to search. Now this feature allows you to search for anything on the screen by circling it and all you have to to enable it is tap and hold on the bottom bar right there until you see a prompt with an animation explaining how circle to search works. Now I use this feature almost every single day and here is how I use it. So for example, I'm on Twitter a lot and most of the time I'm on Malay Twitter. You know, my Malay is not very great. So how I'm able to use this is I press and hold the home button right there and I tap on the translate button in the bottom right, which enables me to translate the entire text or thread or chat. And most importantly, it also works for images as well, which is just fantastic really. And it goes just beyond translating text, right? It goes into searching for products and all of that. I really recommend you enable circle to search here on the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL. Developer settings. Now to enable some advanced features and to speed up your phone, we need to enable developer settings here on the Pixel 9. Now to do it, go to settings and scroll down to about phone. Tap on build number five times, enter your device pin when prompted and developer mode will be enabled. And to access developer mode, go back to the main settings page, tap on system, scroll down and tap on developer options. And one of the first settings to change is to reduce the animation speed by scrolling down to Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale, and Animator Duration Scale. Now change each of these to 0.5, making your phone feel much faster. Next, scroll down and enable predictive back animations. Now this provides a richer preview when you use the back gestures in supported apps. And finally, Pixels are known for their very good cameras. And here, let's go into the camera so we can change some settings that I recommend here for you. Now open the camera app and grant access to your device location if you've not already. Now two settings are enabled by default which I suggest you keep on such as save location and top shot. Now in the camera interface you see that there are multiple cameras here including the main camera, the wide angle camera, the 2x camera and a 5x camera. Tap on the settings icon in the bottom left and adjust the following. Turn top shot to always on as this will enable you to be able to get photos out of a video that is recorded with each shot you take. Next tap on more settings to access the full settings page and here if you're not a camera pro you're not used to taking photos, you can enable guided frame, which provides you a visual and sound cues to be able to, you know, get your best photos. Turn on social share, which allows you to share photos directly from the camera app to Instagram stories, for example. So you don't need to open your gallery app and then share from there. Enable frequent faces, which will prioritize capturing photos of the people you frequently capture, like for example, your friends or your family. Adjust the composition settings by turning on framing hints that set the grid type to three by three to help frame your subject according to photography rules like you know, the rule of 
words, for example. Now in the main camera interface, tap on the certain icons and then tap on Pro. And you can change from 12 megapixel to 50 megapixel here if you want to get higher resolution shots. But do be warned that it will disable top shot. You can also select raw photos here to capture raw images in case you're someone who wants to process your photos later on like Adobe Lightroom, for example. You can also enable manual lens selection so that you know if you're trying to take a telephoto photo, it will not switch to the main camera. For example, if there's lower light, you have ultimate control over how the lenses behave. Now let's switch to video mode, which is a dedicated mode here on the Pixel 9 series of phone. Uh, you can tap on the bottom left to switch to 4K resolution instead of full HD so we get the best quality here. You can also turn on speech enhancements to reduce unwanted noise like wind and traffic, which can come in handy if you're recording in a loud place. And consider turning on video boost, which enhances your videos using Google's cloud. But again, this will take some time and I would not suggest you turn this on permanently, only for maybe low light videos. And then there's the add me feature, which allows you to include yourself in a group photo without leaving anyone out. This is a really nice feature and I wish more phones came with this feature. And it was really cool when I watched the demo as well. And this is one I think many people will enjoy playing with, maybe including yourself. And there you have it. That is my setup guide for the Pixel 9 Pro XL here, which applies to the Pixel 9 or the Pixel 9 Pro. Now, what are my first impressions of this device? Well, the first is that the speakers, and I must say, I was really shocked. Now, like I had the Nexus 6P phone and that had front spacing speakers and it was fantastic. And that was my last sort of Google device. So coming to this, I did not have high expectations for how the speakers were going to sound, but on using it, the speakers not only sound loud, but they sound full as well. Like, I, I don't know, I just, I did a test comparing it with all the other flagship phones I have with me. Have a listen. Now, I'm not sure if, you know, you can hear it on YouTube. Maybe you use headphones so you can hear it better, but other phones might be louder than the Pixel 9 Pro XL. I don't think it's just loudness, but they are not as full as the Pixel 9 XL. It's just as high volumes, especially it doesn't lose its bass. It doesn't become very teeny. It doesn't sound annoying to my autistic brain. No, it's still very pleasing to listen to at the highest of volume. So yeah, the speaker here, I think is one of the most underrated features of the Pixel 9 Pro XL. I wish that the sides of the phone had a matte finish and not this glossy finish. Now there is a matte finish at the back of the phone, just not at the sides, but you know, the sides tend to be a little bit more icky for me and I wish it was just matte all around. Another thing I like are the haptics and the vibration on this phone. It just feels so good. Everything in the interface has feedback and the feedback feels good. It feels premium. And yeah, Google definitely did not cheap out on the vibration motto here on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. I really, really like the pink color here of the phone and it's not really a con, I would say, but I wish it was a little bit more saturated. Now I know the Pixel 9 rose quartz or pink, I just call it pink, is a whole lot more deeper and saturated than this one here. Now this is a pink, but when you actually view it in person and even the case as well, it's not as pink as it will appear or I would like. So I just wish the pink were a little bit more pinker. I have darker skin tone, so bright colors definitely are my jam. You can see I'm wearing red right here in my shirt. So I just glow better with these colors and I just wish it was a bit more saturated. Come on Google. Now, now this one really, really threw me in for a loop, right? So like on other phones, let's say the Galaxy S24 Ultra or even the Xiaomi 14 Ultra or the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6, the power button is at the bottom and the volume buttons are at the top. This is very standard. But after, you know, using the Pixel 9 here, the volume buttons are at the bottom while the power button is at the top. Now I got confused so many times where I was trying to increase the volume, but I locked the phone or I'm trying to lock the phone and I decrease the volume. Like it was very frustrating. Even till today, almost a week later that I started using this phone, I'm still making that error. So yeah, it's just, it's not a con or a pro. It's just something that uh, it really messed with my brain because I'm just not used to it at all. Now I'm not one to turn on sounds on phones, but the sound here on the Pixel is just so nice. Like, I I like the system sounds here on the Pixel and is one that I'm definitely going to keep on. And there you have it. That is my unboxing setup guide and first impressions here of the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Now this is my first Pixel device. It just launched here in Malaysia. This is the pricing on screen right now for all of the SKUs for the Pixel 9 series. What are your thoughts about this phone? I'm definitely excited because you know, this is again, this is my first Pixel phone. I've had, you know, Google phones in the past. I had the Nexus 6P, I had the Nexus 4. So it's not my first 
first Google phone technically, but my first Pixel phone, absolutely, yeah. So let me know what you want me to cover in my full review. I definitely have lots of thoughts about the camera because I've been taking so much photos. I've been posting it on my Threads account. So maybe you want to follow me there. I think I've been posting every single day about the Pixel there. So maybe you want to go follow me there, wink, wink. But yes, like I definitely have so many thoughts about the camera here, especially because I care about the camera a lot and, you know, battery life and all of those good stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. You know, I really appreciate if you hit a like button as that really helps me out here. Leave a comment, you know, if you're not even going to do anything as to what you think about this video. Did the tips help you? Do you have any tips of your own you can share with me? I would love that because, again, this is my first Pixel phone. All of those good stuff in the comment section down there below. And most importantly, make sure you text me when you get home so I know you got home safe. And, you know, if you want to support me here on the channel, I have PayPal. I have the subscriptions here. I You can buy me a coffee. That goes a long way in supporting me here on the channel. A huge shout out to Google for sending me a unit of this. They do not get to tell me what to say or when to say it or anything. They're seeing this video at exactly the same time you're seeing it. And yes... That has pretty much been it. I shall catch you in the next video. Don't forget to stay awesome. I've been a captain of awesome. This is Geekception. Bye.